What's your view on the Fed right now? We got that soft and expected jobs report in your mind. Does that increase the chance of that 50 basis point cut? And, and what was the what would the potential of the 50 basis point cut? What would that mean for the markets? Sure. Great. And good morning, Frank. Thanks for having me back in your show. So I think our base case has been the entire year, three rate cuts this year, three rate right. cuts. And I think 25 basis points is what the Fed does in September in a, in a couple weeks. I think for reasons, for reasons, first of all, inflation is slowing down. The economy is slowing down. It makes sense for the Fed to cut rates. But the economy is not as bad as people are worried about. The payroll report on Friday, it was okay. Okay, it's some good points, but think about labor market increased. We saw unemployment rate 4.2%, some good data and some bad data. Right. So we still think the Fed cuts rates. The markets may be a little bit exaggerated in terms of how many rate cuts, maybe four, maybe five. We're saying three. But three. I think you're, you're really leading me to my question. The market's expecting deeper rate cuts than you yeah. think this, we're actually going to see. So then a 25 basis point cut, what impact does that actually have on the market? Is that already I, priced in or the gains already there or does it give an additional boost? Yeah, this is what worries me. I do think the markets are set up for a pullback, maybe eight to 10 percent pullback and part of the, the driver is September seasonality. Part of it is a Fed. The markets are a classic buy the rumors, sell the news. The markets have been pricing in Fed cuts for a while. We do think the Fed cuts rates. Markets are being a little disappointed and we do see markets pulling back again. September seasonality, again, political uncertainty going yep. forward. All this together, pullback. Craig, same question for you. Are you expecting 25 or 50 and then what's the market impact either way you believe it's going to go? Morning, Frank. I think 25 basis points is baked in at this point in time. I agree with Gene from the perspective that the Fed is going to go slow. If they're going to have to go 50 basis points, it's going to be a little bit concerning, I think, to investors. So 25, 25, 25 would be uh, the same as Gene from our perspective. But I think, Frank, right now, we got to keep into perspective right now, sort of keep calm and carry on, as that the seasonality for September, yes, is weak. But as you start looking at October, you are typically higher 86% of the time looking back to 1929. Uh, and you also have a positivity rate that's around 86%. So from our perspective, markets can continue to work and it gets even stronger as you get into November. And then some of this uncertainty starts to fade away. All right. So. Craig, you think the markets, you know, you just kind of press on right now is what you're saying, but you've also called for a pullback in the past. Uh, we did see last week, we saw the markets have their worst week since March of 2023, again, uh, circulating around that SVB crisis. But this morning, we're seeing a big bounce back. I'm looking at the NASDAQ up three quarters of 1%, S&P up over a half a percent. What's your take on the action we're seeing in the pre-market today? Well, I think the action is, yes, we're getting a rebound and we're getting sort of a nice recovery. But, Frank, we got to break this market apart. If you, start, if you first start taking a look at the MAG-7 stocks, these stocks are set up to go probably nowhere, sideways. Frank, you and I have been talking about the MAG-7 becoming the LAG-7 for, well, really a lot, almost this entire year. I think that is playing out. Below the surface, we can find a lot of mid-cap stocks in the 2 to $10 billion range that have got great top and bottom line growth that look pretty constructive on the right. charts. You so know, look for Craig, more sideways. I, I don't want to interrupt Saturday. you, but we're going to get to some of your picks, some of the stocks that you're very constructive on in just a minute. I, I just want to get Gene's take very quickly. What we're seeing in the pre-market, again, NASDAQ up three quarters of 1%, S&P up over a half a percent in the futures. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a dead cap balance. We do think markets, as I mentioned before, 8 to 10% pullback gets us down to the 200-day moving average. I think today's balance bounce back is a little bit two factors. One, first of all, the employment report not as bad as people anticipated. Second of all, a slight little nuance. Last night, Japanese GDP for second quarter was revised a little bit downward. This puts in some uncertainty around consumer spending and business spending in the Japanese economy. Okay. They're still going to raise rates later this year, but it adds a little bit of murkiness. Can I turn back to the U.S. markets with you for a second? We have actually a big event coming up. We talked about CPI, PPI, yeah. maybe being a market mover later this week. Yep. Today, Apple's having a big event. We're going to show <laughs> the chart. So, since WWDC, yeah. Apple, when they unveiled their, you know, their AI tools, generative AI, Apple intelligence, those shares are up double digits. The market's almost sideways, just up over 1%. Um, if <laughs> Apple disappoints on today yep. uh, and the stock goes down, are you worried about the direction of the market? We don't uh, talk about Apple the way we did before, uh, but still has big weighting in so many ETFs, big weighting in the market. Yeah, this plays into my whole theme about triple whammy. Right now, weighing on the market, you have high valuations, high concentration in technology, and high expectations. High expectations, especially in a lot of these like big name stocks. Any disappointment, any concern, any pullback, take this together, push the stocks down. Craig, you at all worried about Apple being a sell on the news situation later today? I don't think so, Frank. I think there's going to be 
okay news coming out. There's a lot of new products uh, that are coming out. The AI probably drives a great product cycle, according to our fundamental analysts. And frankly, when I just look at the, the chart itself, we're just sort of consolidating sideways in here. I've been watching the relative performance on Apple for a while, just trading sideways. So from my perspective, as long as these big mega cap stocks go sideways, I don't think you get a big downdraft in this market, Frank. I think you get just a pullback and an opportunity to be buying uh, stocks at a uh, at a decent price. So, Craig, I want to get some of the stocks you're constructive on right now. I really want to focus on the on the healthcare focused stocks that you're liking right now. Uh, one of them is Bridge Biopharma, uh, down 23 percent year to date. It's a it's a cancer medicine company. Uh, Boston Scientific uh, up 41 percent. Medical devices. Then you have Gilead, really a focus on like HIV and hepatitis drugs. I don't quite see the theme there. Is the is the theme here that we're getting rate cuts and that's going to help the sector or is there some other theme when you're when it comes to the stocks that you're constructive on well frank there's really two themes here number one uh we do know that we are going to see the fed cutting rates here next week uh, when we go back and we look through history we can see that healthcare does well when we do get these rate cuts the second thing is a lot of these stocks have not performed well at all and again, the rate cuts are going to ultimately help. That'll help biotech and that'll help healthcare across the board. So, a combination of these things, Frank, we think will be positive for healthcare. Again, it's not an overweight sector for us yet. We're looking for the relative strength to improve, but we do want to start bringing these these stocks to the surface for a lot of investors because they've been off the radar. People have only been thinking about Google and Apple and Microsoft and these other names. There are a lot of other good companies right. out there to think about.